So, Speaker, uh, this is a motion that, notwithstanding the resolution of the Senate on the approval of the Senate calendar made on 16th February 2023, and noting the resolutions of the Senate made on Thursday, 23rd of March 2023, on the 5th report of the Procedure and Rules Committee on the amendments to the standing orders of the Senate, and pursuant to standing order number 32-4, the Senate resolves to amend its calendar, regular sessions of the Senate of the second session 2023 to provide for morning sittings on Wednesday, pursuant to standing order number 34. Mr. Speaker, sir, this is not the first time that the Senate uh, will be sitting on Wednesday mornings. You will recall, Mr. Speaker, that previously we've had sessions where on Wednesday morning, the Senate met and transacted business. But over the course of time, when it became clearly evident, Mr. Speaker, that members were more keen on being before committees in the morning hours of Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and sometimes even Fridays, then as a House, we did resolve, Mr. Speaker, to have our sittings just be on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 2.30 to 6.30, unless the House is otherwise moved, Mr. Speaker. But since this House has now adopted, Mr. Speaker, the provisions of the standing order in agreement to what our Procedures and Rules Committee proposed before the House to provide for Cabinet Secretaries to appear before this House, Mr. Speaker, we want to propose additional time for the Senate to meet so that we do not interrupt the Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, 2.30, that is mostly otherwise filled up, Mr. Speaker, either considering motions on uh, various issues that are topical to the country or statements that are being brought by members, Mr. Speaker, or bills, such as the bills that you want to consider this afternoon, uh, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, it is in good order that I requested the SBC and they agreed with us that we move this motion to allow that the Senate does meet every Wednesday and the questions as provided for in the motion that we moved here, Mr. Speaker, to provide for different cabinet secretaries to be notified way in advance of time, the questions that they shall be asked, so that members can show up in this house, Mr. Speaker, and we agree, depending on how the first two or three sessions will go, the length of time that you're going to spend, Mr. Speaker. These are things that we say that once we begin on the exercise, and depending on the interest of members and the questions and the issues that are arising from the constituents that we represent in this House, Mr. Speaker, we shall be able to determine how many, for example, cabinet secretaries we can have in a single uh, Wednesday afternoon, and depending on the issues that have been uh, brought before us. Mr. Speaker, therefore, this is a fairly straightforward matter. I do not see why anybody, uh, Mr. Speaker, for whatever reason, uh, will have a problem with it. But of course, I do not want to preempt debate. I want to leave it to the wisdom of the House to either agree uh, with us, either as proposed or together with an amendment, Mr. Speaker, so that this House can meet on Wednesday mornings and uh, consider, Mr. Speaker, that there is business that is actually long-standing and pending. Part of what we could do, Mr. Speaker, and uh, we will be suggesting this to the uh, Senate Business Committee, is that if you look through our order paper, Mr. Speaker, this afternoon, there are almost 10 to 20 motions that have been proposed by various colleagues, which because of the nature of how we transact business in this House, unfortunately we have not been able to consider them. Some of these motion, uh, motions have been on the order paper for almost uh, three or four months, and it's not right, Mr. Speaker. Part of what we could do on those mornings of Wednesday, Mr. Speaker, if you find that we have met and we have concluded on the business and members are satisfied that the business that had been uh, slated earlier, our Cabinet Secretary has responded sufficiently, or asked for additional time, Mr. Speaker, to find uh, better answers to bring before the House, we could as well consider other long-standing businesses that are before uh, the order paper, Mr. Speaker, so that we don't have this practice where colleagues are proposing motions. I don't believe it is out of uh, uh, idle, uh, idleness, Mr. Speaker, or just for want of uh, 
uh, to fill up the order paper that colleagues proposed motions before us. Therefore, it's unfair that we have kept some of these motions on the order paper for more than a month or two, Mr. Speaker. So giving the Senate additional time to meet means actually we shall be able to transact more business, uh, Mr. Speaker, as a House. And therefore, I want to request uh, colleague senators to agree uh, with this proposal so that we can quickly be able to uh, conclude on uh, this business and move on uh, to additional uh, business. Of course, Mr. Speaker, I do know, and I want to appreciate your, house, uh, your guidance yesterday, Mr. Speaker, because there had been an erroneous interpretation uh, that by cabinet secretaries appearing uh, before this house, uh, Mr. Speaker, in a gathering of the plenary, that they are not required to appear uh, before the committees as expected by Article 153 of our Constitution. I appreciate, Mr. Speaker, that yesterday you gave uh, clear guidelines that cabinet ministers will still appear before our committees of parliament, the committees of Senate, uh, Mr. Speaker, to respond to other ordinary business that was pending or that will uh, arise in the course of members of the various committees going about uh, their duties, Mr. Speaker. That leads to uh, rest that particular matter. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, given that this is a fairly straightforward matter, I do not intend to be long about it because uh, I believe it's something that colleagues can read, understand, and appreciate it. With those very many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move and request that the Senator for Kakamega, the Dr. Bonnie Halwale, uh, to second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.